It is the 2nd of November 2014. A very good evening. My name is Mwavenya Wanyasa. Now these are some of the stories that we compiled for you over the week. Kenya has already received accolades from international organizations, including the United Nations for Implementing Free Primary Education, which was introduced during former President Mwai Kibaki's administration. The task force report that was presented to the head of state is aimed at ensuring equity and quality education for all Kenyan children. The task force was chaired by former Assistant Minister Kilemi Muiria, who has since been appointed Presidential Advisor on Education. On new secondary schools, the task force recommends control and expansion of existing ones. It is indeed a good sign that the government is committed to addressing the education challenges in Kenya in line with the Millennium Development Goals and achieving the Vision 2030. Reporting for WTV, my name is Agnes Miner. Knowing your personality is important as you get to understand who you are, why you do what you do, and how to relate with yourself and others. Just how many types of personalities are there? Mark Mbogwa, a personality coach, explains. We have four main personalities, but they branch out to be 18. We have the choleric, we have the sanguine, we have the phlegmatic and the melancholic. It's not possible to be in one, but it's possible to have one dominant, let's say melancholic or sanguine. How can one know their unique personality and just what are the unique character traits that one should look out for? Let's start with the melancholic. Melancholic is a thinker. His leadership style is in meticulous type of conversations. When you're dealing with this individual, it's important to be precise. It's important to be detail-oriented. So basically, that's, that's their niche. We come with Sanguine. Sanguine is the playful among the four. Uh, is a thinker also, but a progressive. She is quite bubbly also. That's her work style. Uh, we also have um, the choleric. With this type of personality, we are having long-term thinking. We are having the here and now. Uh, an aggressive, a, a little bit aggressive personality. Uh, finally, we do have uh, the phlegmatic. This is the easygoing personality. Um, he or she can also be detail oriented, but she's quiet and she's witty. He further explains the importance of an individual's ability to know and understand their personality. When you are in your domain, when you know your gifting and you know your area of excellence, things that are quite pricey, things that were not thought of, these are boundaries we can actually break, become common. That's my main purpose. My main purpose is you working with a sense of direction, knowing your place and knowing your place. And most importantly, knowing your gifting and actually areas that you can fit in comfortably. And most importantly, your area of excellence. That's why it's important to know your personality. According to Mbogwa, there are six other professions that you can do and excel at. However, most Kenyans are not keen to visit a personality coach citing exorbitant costs. The personality coach feels that this should not be so. How am I wired to excel? Not just perform, not just celebrate your unique, uniqueness. How am I best wired to actually contribute to my uniqueness? So it's not too expensive once we look at the reality here. Knowing one's personality can help cover a person's niche in the society as they will be able to know their gifting and thus sharpen their unique areas of excellence successfully. Reporting for WTV, I am Irene Galgalo. The discovery of antibiotics has for the longest time helped avert several deaths related to bacterial infections. However, the misuse and abuse of the same is now threatening to create a catastrophe in future. According to the World Health Organization, if nothing is done about the trend, many common infections will no longer have a cure and once again could kill unabated. Irrational use of antibiotic is a global problem, with more and more children becoming victims by being continuously exposed to the drugs at a tender age by parents, worsening the already monstrous problem. Continuous exposure to antibiotics leads to the development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, as in the case of drug-resistant TB in Kenya. So, end of last year, 
we had about 550 confirmed cases of MDRTB in the country. So far, only about 230 of those diagnosed with MDRTB uh, have been put on treatment. And Farmers are also culprits as they give their cattle and poultry unnecessary doses of antibiotics, thus contributing to the cycle of abuse. And more often than not, the meal that ends up on our tables has traces of antibiotics. Each one of us has a role to play in preventing or decelerating antibiotic resistance. In essence, antibiotics should only be taken only when necessary and prescribed by medical personnel. Farmers, on the other hand, should consult qualified veterinary personnel before the use of any antibiotics on their animals. Recommended periods before slaughter or consumption of milk after animals are treated with antibiotics should also be strictly adhered to. Reporting for WTV News, I am Wavenya Wanyasa. The normal human being requires at least six to eight hours of sleep to achieve proper bodily function. Anything less than that or the need for extra and often unsuccessful effort required to achieve this is medically referred to as insomnia. I'm not make up for sleep. It's very difficult. If you don't sleep at certain time that your body needs it, uh, then you lost it. Mm -hmm. There is no make up. <laughs> Insomnia is a relatively common sleeping disorder affecting about one-third of the adult population worldwide. The disorder is more common in women, but generally quality of sleep often decreases equally in both men and women with the progression of age. That said, there are other contributing factors. Sleep because uh, we have an uh, inadequate sleep hygiene routine. Second biggest medical issues. We underestimate the importance of uh, you know, a post-nasal drip or allergy or uh, a problem with uh, a pain syndrome, uh, a headache, uh, a restless leg syndrome. And people don't pay attention. Third reason we don't sleep is because we don't think it's important. Just what is the importance of getting good quality sleep? During sleep, the body is getting restored. So things that happen, bumps, you know, bruises, little things that wouldn't normally bother us but could accumulate, get taken care of so that they don't bother us the next day. Thankfully, there are certain measures, if religiously put to practice, that would aid in resolving insomnia. Sleep, just like all other important aspects of our lives, should be taken seriously and given much priority. Reporting for WTV News, I am Wavinya Wanyasa. Well, and that's what we had for you. Do have yourselves a wonderful week ahead. My name is Wavinya Wanyasa. <laughs>